I know that you have a lot of really important things to share about stomach acid and stomach acid health. Help me myth bust these dumb, you know, misconceptions that still persist even in the doctor's office about stomach acid and how this yeah. plays a role in our digestive health. For sure. Well, you know, with, with our stomach acid, we actually need very, very, very strong acid to break down, particularly harder to digest proteins, healthy foods, like let's say grass fed steak. It's healthy, lots of nutrients, really good protein in there, but we need acid in order to really break that down effectively so we can digest the protein and break it down into amino acids so we can absorb vitamin B12, uh, chelate the different minerals, iron, zinc, magnesium, calcium, things like that, that are out of there. And what happens is at rest, our stomach acid, when we're at rest, okay, not eating anything, we don't need to be producing a lot of stomach acid. Now our stomach mm -hmm pH is always going to be a lot lower than normal pH, than, than kind of a, a neutral pH. It's usually at rest right around 3 to 3.5. Now, neutral is 7.0, right? And, and it's a pH scale, so it's significantly more acidic in our stomach than it is, for example, in our blood or, or normal pH water. When we eat food, let's say we're eating steak, we actually need to get that stomach acid down around 1.5 to 2.2. Okay, and it doesn't seem like that big a jump, but it's a it's a very large amount of acid that we need to produce, and it's very energy demanding in order to do that. Mm, and by point. by energy demanding, it sounds like a bad thing, but it's 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 totally fine. It's a normal process of our body. You know, our body should be good at doing that, um, and we should be. You know, the, I I think the idea is that we really need to be at rest when we're doing it. So there's part of our nervous system called our sympathetic nervous system and that's our fight or flight part of our nervous system and then we have our parasympathetic part of our automatic nervous system autonomic uh nervous system and that's the part that's really focused on resting healing and digesting and so <clears throat> when we're on the go we've got the sympathetic nervous system up right and that's normal that helps us be able to perform well and things that we're doing think sharply quickly um you know run away from stress exercise all of those types of things. But when we're eating, we really need to activate that parasympathetic nervous system in order to produce the digestive juices we need to break down our food and digest and absorb the nutrients. In our society, we have this idea of fast food, right? And, and of course, you and I, you know, most fast food restaurants, very unhealthy food, but really even just the idea of fast food, like eating fast is counterintuitive to what our gut really needs to be doing. We need to actually in a sense, a slower meal. Um, mm. We need to be taking time to be able to digest and break that down. We should be in a relaxed state. And that's really key. And so and that allows us to produce the stomach acid we need. When we produce enough stomach acid, <clears throat> we break down the protein, we break, we are able to absorb those minerals, absorb vitamin B12, but then also we're able to open up the pyloric sphincter, which is this little muscle between our stomach and our small intestine that allows food to move through. When we don't produce enough stomach acid, and this is a condition called hypochloridria, we mm -hmm. are not producing enough acid, we don't get good digestion. The food just sits there. And when it sits there, it starts to rot and putrefy and will create gas. And that gas puts an upward pressure on the esophageal sphincter. That's the sphincter that protects the esophagus from this acid. And now that sphincter goes open and now food contents and acid will actually jump up into the esophagus causing some indigestion. You know, for some, they notice it as a lot of burning, heartburn. We think about mm -hmm. that. For some, it's just a little bit of indigestion. And for others, we call it silent reflux, right? Mm -hmm. Where they don't even really know anything is going on. They don't have a lot of pain there, but it's affecting their, you know, it's, it's a sign of poor digestion and it can affect their voice. It can affect a lot of different factors like that. Yeah, and they can so, feel like a constriction in their throat, but because it's yes. not burning, they never make that connection or the dental and gum health is compromised, but they don't know why. Correct. Absolutely. So all of that now leads to poor downstream, right? So it's upstream, but now it's going to cause problems downstream because we really need, when, when we have a pre-digested food, we call it a bolus. So we need a very acidic bolus moving from the stomach into the small intestine. It triggers the right release of bile. Bile is alkaline. And so bile comes out to neutralize the pH of that acidic bolus 
or the small intestine, but it also helps emulsify the fats that are in there so we can break them down and absorb fats. We need healthy fats. We also need fat-soluble nutrients, vitamin A, E, D, vitamin K. It helps us absorb that. And it's also very antimicrobial. And so the stomach acid kills off the more alkaline-based bacteria that's coming in on the food we're consuming. But then there's acid-loving bacteria, and we need to neutralize those as well. And the bile does that as long as we get the right release. And then we also release bicarbonate and digestive enzymes from the pancreas at the same time. That's being pushed into the small intestine. Get that pH up because we don't want a acidic bolus in the small intestine. We want to be able to break down and digest and absorb the food effectively. So this is all you know, like a, like a domino. And so if the first domino doesn't go down well, the others aren't gonna, going to as well. And so now the food is undigested, right? So it's moving through, but it's not effectively digested. That's going to cause more putrefaction, okay? More rotting, putrefaction, you know, in the small intestine. And it's going to cause more inflammation and irritation in the small intestine. And now the small intestinal, the intestinal lining is only one cell wall thick in the small intestine. It's designed for optimizing nutrient absorption, but it's not designed for um, you know, undigested food, you know, basically food that's not digested properly and constantly coming through. Like in our society, we're always eating. So we constantly have this mechanical stress and that's going to put more irritation and a greater risk of irritating that gut lining and causing what we call intestinal permeability or leaky gut syndrome. And then that's going to drive up inflammation in the blood, right? And so now that inflammation in the blood can impact all different areas of the body. So it starts with that gut inflammation, but that gut inflammation could be coming from you just eating too quickly and on the go mm. um, and not taking time to get the right parasympathetic tone or what we call vagal tone. Vagus nerve is a main branch of the parasympathetic nervous system, runs from the brainstem down into all of our visceral organs, including our stomach, helps, helps produce uh, the right amount of stomach acid, bile, and pancreatic enzymes to digest our meal effectively. So if we have poor vagal tone, trying to eat our meal, that alone can cause this major stress condition and uh, this this gut inflammation. Yeah, beautifully said. So given all of that, how is somebody supposed to think about their gastric juices? Like, am I supposed to be actively managing this now that I've created this huge problem that's probably been years in the making? Like, what should I be doing to support my stomach acid, my enzymes, my bile flow? Where would you yeah, like for to sure. start? For sure. Well, you know, first thing you could do is just take a few deep breaths. In fact, uh, something called box breathing uh, has been shown to help improve vagal tone. And box breathing is just basically, you think about it like a box. At the top, you have a four-second inhalation. It doesn't necessarily have to be four seconds. That's just kind of the most well-researched way of box breathing. Could just be two seconds in the beginning if you feel like four seconds is too intense. But basically, it's a four-second inhalation, and then you hold for four seconds, and then you exhale for four seconds, and then you hold for four seconds, and then you inhale for four seconds, right? And so I recommend doing basically somewhere between, let's say, three to seven rounds of that, okay? And that's roughly one to two minutes. Um, and that alone will help activate the vagus nerve. And that's a really good idea, especially if you feel like you've been on fight or flight, right? Your system's in fight or flight. It's a really good idea. You can also munch on some ginger root. The, the pungency of ginger um, activates the vagus nerve, right? That very strong kind of so astringent, true. spicy type flavor activates the vagus nerve. You know, another thing that a lot of people do is put a little bit of apple cider vinegar, like a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in let's say four ounces of water, a usual like gulp of water is about two ounces. So it's like two ounces of, or two gulps of water, about four ounces in there, you know, a few minutes before you eat. And that can also help activate the stomach acid. Now, a key test is if you do that, one tablespoon and four ounces, you actually notice a lot of gut pain, like a lot of stomach pain when you do that, which some people will, it's actually a sign you may have an ulcer. So your stomach lining may have broken down so much that it doesn't have the thick mucous membrane protecting it and that acid's irritating it, right? If that's you, you actually don't want to do the apple cider vinegar. Then you want to do a lot of glutamine or aloe vera, or you can drink like slippery elm, marshmallow root tea, a lot of these types of uh, mucilaginous type of uh, compounds, right? Herbs that will help rebuild the mucous membrane in there. 
Okay. And then of course, we want to figure out why you might have that. It could be overuse of NSAIDs. It could be a H. pylori infection, something along those lines. Um, but for most people, you know, you take the apple cider vinegar, most people feel pretty good when they do that. Now, there are some people also that have histamine issues, right? They may not do the apple cider vinegar. Uh, the ginger root though can be helpful and the box breathing in that case, right? So we got something for everybody, right? And um, so try to do at least one of those things and that can be really, really helpful. And then, you know, just, uh, you know, like before I eat, I pray, right? And that idea of praying before you eat is is obviously a great way to, to grow spiritually, but also it puts you in a parasympathetic a state of gratitude, right? And that's par that's parasympathetic. It's going to activate that vagus nerve, right? So being thankful for your food, for your meal, and not just gulping it down because you're on the go is a really good idea for producing those digestive juices properly. Now, other things, you know, we always say like, like when it comes to bioflow, we always say bitter is good for your liver. So using bitters, and there are supplements that you can use that are bitters. And you can also just try, you know, real food, you know, whole food bitters, right? Dandelion, you could do herbal teas with them, or you could just eat them. Uh, sprouts, right? A lot of different, like we grow sprouts here in our, our kitchen, basically. Mm. Um, and we'll just take sprouts with all of our meals. Uh, broccoli sprouts, radish sprouts, those things, they have this, you know, natural bitterness to them. And that can help stimulate good bile flow and thin the bile. And so that's really helpful. Radishes, uh, artichokes, um, leeks are helpful. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm missing a bunch, but cilantro, parsley, right? All of those a lot are great. Of them. Ginger. Citrus, everybody's favorite yeah. is coffee, of course. That's what Coffee, that exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so if there's any of them that I said that you're like, oh, when I eat that, I just flare up, then don't, don't do that don't one. Don't do right? it. But then. <laughs> there's, we can find something for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, yeah. there's, there's something to be said for this obsession with bioflow. You know, of course, I'm always obsessed with bioflow or liquid gold detergent in our bodies. It's I mean, expensive. we should be, right? It's really important. Yes, it is. And we're not living a lifestyle by default that actually supports healthy digestion, which requires that easy bioflow, right? So by default, we've got gummy, sludgy bile at this point, especially the older that we are. I would venture to say that um, I mean, I, I realize that I have a skewed practice because of who comes to me, right? That's sensitive people with chronic digestive conditions, but there's always work to do in that scenario on bioflow. So pretty much everything that supports good stomach acid production is also going to support good bioflow and vice versa. If you're working on things to support your bioflow, you're going to improve your stomach acid production. So they go hand in hand and that's, that's the good thing. 